if I was going to evaluate the various arguments that are present in today's popular conversations, and I wanted to tease out the worst ones, I would probably consider some combination of how fallacious it is and how popular it is. If it's really egregious and clearly wrong and also very popular, then it's probably a contender for one of the worst arguments. And I would say that this one ranks up there. I see it a lot in the comments on my videos, and there are quite a few popular atheists who like to repeat it. Uh, Ricky Gervais famously uses it whenever he gets the chance to exfoliate his atheism in front of a, an audience. And Richard Dawkins used it in The God Delusion, and this is probably the origin of it. In it he said, We are all atheists about most of the gods that humanity has ever believed in. Some of us just go one god further. And it's very effective in something like a late night TV exchange. For one, it's succinct, and for another, it's, it's quite clever, so it brings the appearance of being logical. So basically, you believe in, you, you, you deny one less God than I do. You don't believe in 2,999 gods, uh -huh. and I don't believe in just one more. Right. <laughs> do you, do you, uh... As a rhetorical instrument, it hits all the right notes. But rhetoric without sound logic is just sophistry, which is why in a classical liberal arts education, you had to learn logic or dialectic first before rhetoric. You had to have a, a proper understanding of what sound logic was before you applied persuasive speech to it. Otherwise, you would just become a sophist. But like a lot of good things from our heritage, we decided to discard that, that educational tradition. So our educational superiors decided we don't need to teach people logic anymore, which is why sophistry has such free reign over the popular conversations that are present in our culture these days, from politics to advertising to books like The God Delusion. From the perspective of a theist like me, it's quite difficult to respond to because it's so short and witty that people expect an equally short and witty reply. But instead we find ourselves trying to do this whole educational exposition of why it's fallacious. The truth is it's a non sequitur in the highest degree and that's being generous. It simply doesn't follow that because you believe in one less God than I do, that I'm practically an atheist too. It also doesn't follow that God doesn't exist, or that atheism is true, or that theism is false. There's nothing valid in its content, and it doesn't even seem to assert a conclusion, so we're just left trying to grasp at what the conclusion might be. But because it's so common and so popular and often repeated, it does require a, a reply. So if we as theists need to reply to it in a succinct way, I think the best way would be to come at it by way of an analogy. If it's valid to claim that since a person like myself rejects the majority of claims about God or divinity, then I might as well reject all claims about God or divinity, then the following analogy would also be true. Let's say I'm a math denier. I deny all math as invalid from the beginning. And to try to persuade you in that, I ask you, one plus one is two, right? Which of course you would say, yeah, of course. And I would say one plus one isn't three, it's not four, it's not five, or any of the other seemingly unlimited replies you could give as a solution to that problem. So when you say that one plus one equals two and not any of the other possible answers, you're saying that you reject the innumerable alternative options. Well, I just go one step further and deny one plus one equals two. And since it's just one more step of denial, you might as well deny that too and thereby deny all of math. All of truth works this way. To accept anything as definitively true is to reject all of the incompatible alternative options. Truth is exclusive. To say yes to anything is to say no to everything else. So that original argument is like telling a married man that he's practically a bachelor because he rejected every other woman except for one. The only difference between him and a real bachelor is that a real bachelor just goes one step further. So I hope you can see how embarrassingly absurd that logic is when applied to anything other than God. The other problem with this argument is that it seems to suffer from a false equivalency, which is common in a world that likes to compare all religions as if they're making claims about the same fundamental parameters. So as many atheists insist, rejecting the existence of Thor or Odin or Santa Claus or the Tooth Fairy is no different from rejecting the existence of the God of the Bible. 
But this betrays a fundamental misunderstanding of what it is that Christians and Jews claim about God, which is that God isn't some higher being within the universe. As Bishop Barron often says, God isn't one being among many within the universe. He is being itself. Because the thing about Zeus or Santa Claus is that you can provide contrary evidence to their existence. If it's claimed that there's a jolly fat man that lives at the North Pole who travels around the world and drops presents and under trees every Christmas, well, you could set up a video camera to see who it is that actually drops those presents under, under the Christmas tree. You could fly over the North Pole and look at satellite imagery and if there's nothing there, then somebody has some explaining to do. And too many people think that this is the kind of thing that's being claimed about God in Christianity or Judaism or even Islam for that matter. They think that we're talking about a bearded man who lives in the clouds. And as soon as we have the technology to fly up into the clouds, we notice he's not there. So if he's not in the clouds, maybe he's just remote in the cosmos somewhere. Instead, what is actually being claimed about God is that he transcends the universe, the natural universe. He is the ground of all being. He isn't some being within a reality. He is the source of all reality. So when you put rejection of God who is the creator of everything in the same category as rejection of gods who exist within that creation, you're betraying a, a fundamental lack of appreciation for what it is that's being claimed. It's, it's a category mistake. It would be like saying, I reject the findings of the Warren Commission. Therefore, I can also reject the claims of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. It's like, though, there's no correlation between those things. There's no reason to be comparing them at all. Which is why I think atheists should be attentive to the fact that when you debunk the claims of one religion, that doesn't mean you've debunked them all. They aren't the same thing. Any more than one plus one equals two is the same as one plus one equals three. Debunking the latter doesn't prove that the former is wrong. Hey, thanks for watching that. If you enjoyed it, then be sure to like and subscribe for more. And if you want to support the making of content like this, then please consider joining my online community, The Reinforcements. It's, it's kind of like Patreon, but instead of being beholden to a big tech company, it's a website I built entirely myself. So there's no risk of us being censored or shut down or anything like that. There are hundreds of people who have already signed up and our mission is to renew and reinforce the church. So if that's you, then, then come check it out. As an added bonus for certain tiers, I will also send you a gift box from Glory and Shine, which is a Catholic family owned and operated company. Um, they make bath and body products. They're actually their beard balm I'm, I'm supporting or I'm, I'm sporting right now. I'm not just a spokesperson, I'm actually a customer. So even if you don't join the reinforcements, maybe check them out anyways. Glory and Shine, they're, they're an amazing company.